Hi friends, I'm so glad you could be here today. I'm glad that each day we can look into God's Word together in this Unfolding the Word series. His Word is transformative, living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It changes us, and I hope that's what you're discovering. We've been studying of late in 1 Peter. We're in the third chapter of 1 Peter, and we've been looking at a number of things related to the countercultural lifestyle, uh, the way that we are lights in the midst of the darkness of the fallen world around us and the communities in which God has placed us. In particular, we've been looking at verse 8 in those characteristics of the countercultural organization, the church how God wants us to look and what he wants us to be marked by in the midst of the fallen world in which we find ourselves. Let me read to you again that verse, and we'll seek to conclude our look at it today, Lord willing. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. God's been giving us these marks of what he wants the church to be characterized by in terms of the relational connections of the people, marks of counterculturalism. We saw how the first of those marks was a unity of mind, something that emerges because of being in God's word, being under the teaching of God's word, and being in connection with each other in koinonia. Yesterday, we looked at the second of these characteristics, which was to feel sympathy for one another, the idea of empathy, getting involved enough that we can feel and care about what people are facing. Uh, and we talked something about how size has something to do with that. God intends the church to be a family, and we need to be in a place where it truly is a family and not something else. And then closely related to that, the third of those marks was a place where brotherly love is the hallmark. And this brotherly love, Philadelphios, can only be seen and emerge from a true family relationship. You've got to be connected. So all of that stuff has some bearing on how large God wants a given church to be. He wants the growth of the kingdom to be taking place, and he wants more and more people coming to know him as Savior. But a specific body, there's some size limitation to it built by these very characteristics, at least in my thinking. Anyway, work that through. Today, let's turn and look at the final two of these marks, characteristics of the countercultural church that enables us to be a light in the darkness. The first of these, number four, countercultural church has a tender heart toward one another, and that's certainly the way the ESV translates it. Esplagdos in the, is the Greek word, which is this interesting word. It means literally to be moved in your intestines. <laughs> and the Greeks used that phrase because they were talking about you can't get much deeper than that. And to be moved at the deepest level of you is the concept here. It means to be touched and moved by pity of other people. Now you say, well, how's that different from sympathy, which is the empathy that we talked about yesterday? And the answer to that is that they're very related terms, but this particular term, esplagnos, has the idea of acting on the pity, acting on the concern that is there. So it's not just feeling something, it is moving forward to do something. What a nice combination. <laughs> We're not only empathetic with, but now we are acting on the feelings and the needs of the brothers and sisters. We are touched and moved. The church is a place that God intends us to get close enough to other people that we're able to sense the needs of their life, be empathetic to those needs, and then act on those needs to the degree that's possible. He wants it to be a place not only of internal emotion, but external action. Do you see the distinction? And God says, this is how I want the people to be. Not just people moved, but people acting on things. May that be the case, brothers and sisters. May it be that our hearts are never so calloused that we don't act on what is the Spirit of God's moving within us. 
Now, God says this is part of the light and the darkness, because if you really consider the world, the world is a place that works hard, whether whatever they may say about things, the world works hard to be basically unmoved and callous. The world works hard to, in a sense, wall off any examples of pain and need, because to be around them makes us feel guilty if we're not acting on those things. And God says, that's not how I want the church to be. You don't wall yourself off and wall off the people who have needs. No, this is a place where God wants us to choose to get close enough to other people that we sense their hurts, and then in turn, seek to do what we can do to try to help them in the midst of their hurts. To grow as a church, to be the family that God wants us to be, involves growing in relationships becoming willing to be sharing with each other, and openness together, all of which then carries with it a responsibility to act on, esplagnos, to be moved in our intestines and act on the movement. Is that true in your church? I pray that it is. The fifth of these characteristics of these five is this. The countercultural church is marked by, it says here, a humble mind. The word humble here translates a Greek word, which means lowly mind. Someone who has a, a modest opinion of themselves. They don't see themselves as better or more important than other people. It's a mind that allows a recognition of the essential value of everyone in a group. Now, this lowliness of mind, this humble mind, is a basic ingredient in body life, very important to God. I was thinking in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus is describing himself in a way that uses this same word. Listen to this. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, is the way the ESV translates it here, but it's the same Greek word that's translated humble. Lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Uh, Jesus is the example of what God is saying he wants to be characterizing the church and its relationships together, a place where people have a humbleness of mind, a modest opinion of themselves, and therefore are able to put other people's needs above their own and consider them. Now, a lack of a lowly mind, of a humble mind, hurts the church in several ways. Uh, think of these two primarily. Number one, when I don't have that, I have a tendency to be feeling superior to other people at times. And that breeds the divisions of social class and, and so forth in a church. And God says, listen, uh, that keeps a problem <laughs> In a church, you can't be the family I want you to be if people feel superior to other people. So having the same awareness and care for each other makes an important point. Uh, it it undercuts koinonia developing is another aspect of this because to the degree that I feel more superior, to the degree that I feel prideful in myself, to that degree I feel more apt to be self-sufficient. I don't try to face life with other people because I don't think I need to face life with other people. And therefore, that very pride, the opposite of this humble mind, keeps me from actually becoming interdependent on the others in the church. You see, because this interdependency is a choice that people make, just like the, re the absence of it is a choice people make. A humble mind acknowledges that we need each other. Where's your mind today? Do you look at the brothers and sisters in the church that you're a part of and say, I really need those people, and they need me? <laughs> We're in it together. We need each other. God's great intention is that each brother, redeemed brother and sister in Christ, in a church fellowship, understands at the deepest level how much they need each other. Is that how you see your church family? 
a place where you really need each other? I hope that's the case. So those are the five marks, the five characteristics of the countercultural church that is intended by God to shine a light in the darkness of human relationships and organizations and so forth. A place where there is a unity of mind. A place where there is true sympathy and empathy for one another. A place where brotherly love and affection, family affection, takes hold and deepens. A place where there's a tender heart, as, as splagnos, as we looked at today, where people are not only moved but act on the needs that they perceive. And finally, a place of humility, of a humble mind, where we recognize how much we need each other, and therefore that we're in it together, and together we move forward in the midst of a fallen world, encouraging one another, and becoming tools in the hands of the Lord. May those five characteristics be true in your church and in your life. Well, join me tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll continue on in 1 Peter, because verses 9 to 12 give us yet some additional countercultural contrasts that God wants to be shining as lights in the darkness of our world. Join me then, won't you? God bless.